I'll now show you how the electric trim interrupt works in one of the uh, other aircraft I fly. A Citation uh, jet with winglets, no less. That doesn't make a difference on the trim, but I'll show you how that system works. It's indicative of uh, the 525 series trim systems. Let's now talk about the elevator pitch system on a Citation 525 series. This one in particular is unique. There's only one of uh, 27 of the G1000 CJs uh, out in the wild, so to speak. But it works the same way. To give you a little bit of idea of how the pitch trim system works on the 525 series, which is very common across a lot of different jets, especially a lot of the Citations, but not all, so always uh, verified. Uh, on this aircraft, the aileron trim is all manual. So there's trim tabs on the, on the left aileron, and in the cockpit, you'll adjust the, the trim there when necessary, and it's, you rarely have to use elevator trim. It's just, you can set it and forget it, and it's the same virtually forever. Um, then there's also a rudder trim that's also manual, and you can, you can adjust that. Uh, of course, there's a yaw damper, but that's different than a trim system. So the rudder trim is manual, and, and typically you can leave it again, set and forget it unless you have issues, for example, in a single engine operation. The elevator trim uses a trim tab on the elevator. We'll show you a photo. I'll take some video of that as well so you can see that. And that is operated both manually and electrically. So in the cockpit, I have a big trim wheel, and I can turn it, and I can adjust the trim. Or on each one of the control yokes, there's a, what I call a split trim switch. And the split trim switch, and we'll show you in the cockpit here, is designed because the FAA required a certification for a number of aircraft, two levers. And the reason for that, they wanted dual action. In other words, they didn't want just one side of the trim switch to activate the trim. You have to move both together. If you don't, the trim system doesn't work. And you'll see that on a lot of a lot of trim systems in, in aircraft, so you have to move both. Now the trim system in the Citation jet also has a, we call it a big red button. It's an, not only an autopilot disconnect, but also a trim disconnect. So think of it that if you want to disconnect the autopilot, boom, you hit it once, you want to disconnect the trim, you hit it. But let's talk about how that operation is different, and I'll show you in the cockpit. The only time it in activates the trim is when that button is pushed. So when you first push it, it instantly uh, disconnects the electric trim motor and then the electric trim motor comes back. If I press and hold that trim button, that trim disconnect button, the autopilot trim disconnect button, then it will interrupt that movement while I'm holding the button. So that's a critical thing to remember. The minute I left, lift up on it, the motor will run if it's running one way or the other. On the Citation, and we're going to show you inside here, and this is indicative, as I said, of a number of aircraft with elevator uh, pitch trim systems, is that if the co-pilot is trimming one direction and the pilot does the opposite direction, the pilot has priority, which is pretty cool. So if the pilot's flying around, the co-pilot, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and rolls the trim all the way back, or that the auto, the the pilot can literally go forward, and as long as he's still on that trim switch, whatever he commands will override the co-pilot. So also think of the system, and we're going to simulate sort of a runaway trim by on the co-pilot side, I'm going to run the trim one direction uh, and hold it there as it's running, and then I will disconnect and hold the trim disconnect button in place. So the way I'll do it is we'll run it, and I'll press and hold that autopilot trim disconnect. Now, the minute I let go, it's going to run whatever direction I'm commanding. So that's the critical part. So in terms of our memory items, and we're going to go through the, the entire checklist here in a second, and I'll read it to you. If you have pitch runaway, right, on the trim, pitch trim runaway, you grasp the control yoke firmly, you press and hold that autopilot trim disconnect switch. You put speed brakes out if necessary, like let's say you're in a dive. You adjust with manual trim, and then you pull that trim circuit breaker. Not until that trim circuit breaker is pulled do you release that big red button, the autopilot trim disconnect. Because if you do, 
It's just going to do whatever it was commanded to before, whether that's a crazy co-pilot or a runaway system. So let's look at the checklist. And so this has a G1000. So it's virtually, the steps are identical with the ones using the traditional autopilot system in the Citation Jet. It's not always on every plane for the G1000, but it's keeping it the same. So let's go through this, and we'll talk about it. Autopilot malfunction, elevator trim runaway. Control wheel, grasp firmly. Autopilot disconnect, press and hold. Throttles as required. So if it's in a dive, we may need to pull back. If it's climb, we may, and it's pitched up high, we may need to add it, right? Speed brakes as required. We only use those as required. Manual elevator trim, adjust. And then autopilot servo circuit breaker, left or right panel, pull. So then, big thing that's important, that's right down there in the warning, do not release the autopilot yaw damper disconnect trim interrupt button until after pulling the AP autopilot servo circuit breaker. Once you do that, then the autopilot yaw, yaw damper disconnect trim interrupt button, big red button. It's much easier to say big red button, right? I think so. Just release. Then you can go through all the other issues. This is really, really important, and I'm glad that Garmin and Textron put it in on this. This is applicable to, to all pilots, I think. In flight, do not overpower the autopilot. The trim will operate in the direction opposing the overpower force, which will result in large out-of-trim forces. Procedure completed. So we talked about that a little earlier, but you never want to overpower an autopilot. I can't emphasize that enough. I see, I see clients when I'm flying with them, they'll be an autopilot and they'll turn the plane. Well, what are you doing? Well, I, I want to turn the plane. Well, who's flying it? You or the autopilot? Well, the autopilot just want to adjust. No, 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 no. It's either you flying it or the autopilot. Repeat after me. It's either the pilot flying the plane or the autopilot. Think about it, the positive uh, change of control, right? When you have two pilots in the cockpit, whether well, it's uh, two equally rated pilots or a flight instructor and uh, a student or something, right? You want to say, your controls, my controls, your controls. Same exact thing, right? The minute you put on an autopilot, the autopilot is flying the airplane. Never, ever, ever try to overpower the autopilot to move it or, uh, you know, altitude or heading unless you're in an emergency and you feel like you've got to overpower it. Some autopilots, but not all of them, will disconnect safely when a very strong force is applied to them. And then that's a safety, because imagine this, right? You're flying along, and you say, oh my gosh, my altitude's wrong. I'm just going to pull up. So you pull up. So you pull back the pitch manually. The autopilot says, hey, <laughs> I think you want to get back down there. I want to be down at that altitude. You're, I want to be at 5,000, not the, wherever you're headed. So what it's doing is it's spinning its servos down, so your force is going to be harder to harder to hold. When you let go, and if it's still on the autopilot, it's going to go into a dive. Right? Don't want to have that. You never want to have that. What you're doing the, uh, to their plane is different than the autopilot. So the best thing is always disconnect the autopilot if you're going to touch the controls. In fact, I'll tell my students, hey, get your hands off the controls while I'm just holding on. No, 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 no. You only touch that control yoke when you want to talk. The autopilot's flying it, it's their controls, not yours. In fact, some jets, think about like the M2, CJ3+, Plus, and a whole bunch of other ones, they'll actually just have a little toggle button right on the armrest. So when you're on autopilot, you just go, yep, Seattle Center, yep, there's November 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, click. Seattle Center, copilot says, yep, this is uh, November 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They don't even have to touch the control yoke to transmit because the autopilot's flying. I know I'm trying to drill that in, but so many accidents have happened by people trying to overpower autopilots that are properly engaged. Now, if you have a runaway system, et cetera, what do you do? You press the big red button, right? Not airplanes have a big red one, except on my Cirrus, I actually retrofitted a big red button. I didn't have that one on my G2 uh, SR22, but there was another little hole, so about Two years after owning the airplane, I said, I want a big red button. And I purposely had a autopilot disconnect installed on the control yoke for the pilot instead of doing it through that stupid little hat that they have in some models of the Cirruses. I wanted a big red button. I wanted to be able to disconnect that autopilot rapidly because that's important. 
So let's do that. We're going to go inside. I'm going to show you this procedure on the CJ to give you an idea. So this is just another one of the aircraft. We're just showing bunches of airplanes, right? Uh, on the video, you'll see uh, this guy. We'll do it in the 206. Just did a video on the uh, uh, G1 SR22, which is indicative of the G1s and G2s and some of the early G3s. And then the other ones are different, of course. All right. So let's go inside and take a look at the, auto, the cockpit of this uh, beautiful G1000 CJ. Here's the trim system from the cockpit. So on the control yoke, you notice over here, this is that split trim switch I was mentioning, right? Down there, you see the wheel. So that's the wheel, the manual wheel. It's cool, it has that. So, so if I roll here, just one, you notice that wheel doesn't move. This one doesn't move. If I roll both of them together, that's a dual action. In other words, it takes two actions to move that wheel. So let me show you a couple things. So let's say over on the co-pilot side, la, 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 la. I've got a guy just dinking around, you know, or that, moving this, or your kids or something, and you're on the autopilot. Da, 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 da. Oh, crap, that's not what I want. I want to go forward. As I said, see how that stops? Now it goes forward. That's the priority of the pilot. So that's the pilot priority. Let's kind of simulate we have a pitch trim runaway. So we're flying along, all of a sudden, Oh crap, look at this. Pitch is going up and up and up and up and up and up. All I have to do is press this and hold it. If I let go, it'll continue. So again, like we said outside, pre you press it and hold it until you do everything else to control airplane. So power as required, speed brakes as required, which are down underneath here and then you pull the autopilot servo breaker. Now, in other citations, it'll actually be a pitch trim servo or autopilot servo. So like I said, in other planes, you've got to check for the specific circuit breaker for your aircraft of which one you want to pull. Only after I complete that checklist and the checklist tells me I can release this autopilot trim, yaw damper, disconnect, can I release it? Then I'm good to go. So again, so let's bring it back to takeoff, right? We'll go through a couple of those things right again. So there it's in takeoff. We have a runaway trim. Press and hold it. Press and hold it. And hold it. Adjust the throttle. Speed brakes as necessary. And then uh, pull that autopilot servo circuit breaker in this particular citation. Again, each one's a little different. But that's how you do the trim and And then be prepared. Now, if all of a sudden that nose pitches up dramatically, and that's happened to me before, and it jams. In fact, in the, I'll talk a little bit about that particular case. I couldn't control it manually. It didn't matter disconnected. It was essentially jammed. When I did that, to control it, I reduced the power. Because the power, if too much power, remember, it's an aerodynamic surface. The more air going over it, which happens when you go faster, the more effective it is, that becomes a more critical situation. So uh, that's why frequently with pitch uh, runaways, you may need to pull back the power, even on a climb. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. So that's the Citation Jet 525 series. Works very similar on the other 525s, right uh, 2, 3, et cetera. Oh, got speakers on. It is noisy at airports. <laughs> Those are awesome uh, controllers here at Montgomery. I think ATC in general is a uh, tremendous service. So that gives you an idea of how some of that system works. And then uh, I'll give you some close-ups here of the panel as well. So on the citations, we use this example in the CJ525, the citation jet. This is G1000, but the operation is the same. There is a trim system here. We call it split trim because if you press only one, you can see the trim wheel down here. Only one segment of it, it doesn't move, right? In fact, that's one of the tests. You check each one to make sure that by itself it doesn't. It's called a dual action. So only when you press both of them together will that trim work. Now, this is the autopilot and trim disconnect. So that specifically is for autopilot and trim as well as the yaw damper. So when I press that, 
If the trim is moving, that will interrupt it. So for example, if I'm on the, the co-pilot side and I'm rolling it like this, right? I have to like go for a sec. If I press this, that interrupts and totally interrupts. Now the, pro the issue is you've got to press and hold it. So if the co-pilot is moving it or inadvertently it's moving, right? Let's say you have a pitch trim on Yeah, let's take a look at that um, circuit breaker panel. Now here on the pilot side, and you notice that you'll see the AP servo circuit breaker, and look at that, our red collar. That's so important to have out. Now you see the brake system out just simply because I'm sitting here and I don't want to hear the noise of the brake going on and off, on and off, so we'll make sure we put that back in. But see, there you go. There you've got that circuit breaker, and it's collared in red, so it's easily to be able to identify. So again, you want to know where all those things are. And you notice over here, on the left, I've got green. Green to me kind of indicates ice. So then if I really had a problem that, uh, for the pedostatic and AOA heater and so forth, I could check there. And then I have a left-hand start uh, marked. But anyway, that gives you an idea of uh, that AP servo. All right, we're at the CJ3, and we're going to show you that trim tab and how it operates. Right now, Tigre has our trim set in the cockpit in the takeoff position. So now we'll have them roll the trim back all the way aft with the uh, power trim. So as he's moving, you see how slowly that moves. So now he's rolling it all the way back. Right? So that's how slow those trim tabs move. You always want them to have be super slow movement. And it's all driven by the... Um, rods that are attached underneath you'll see both of those there okay so now that's full deflection so now he's going to bring it back to neutral and go all the way to nose down and you can see it on both of those both of the elevators so now he's doing full nose down you can see on the right elevator that deflection and how small that is so if he brings it back to neutral let's take a back to neutral now when he brings it back to neutral for takeoff, that's about three degrees. So as I talked earlier, when I had picked up that CJ3, I had looked at the tail, I had looked around, but I didn't notice that the trim was actually at about 12 degrees nose, uh, that uh, the elevator trim was 12 degrees at deflection. So even though no matter how far I rolled the trim wheel forward, there is no way I could ever get it even close back to that, that takeoff setting. So that's something to watch out for. So that'll give you an idea of how those trim tabs work on the elevators. Thanks for watching another Personal Wings video. We hope you like it. Click like down there, subscribe. You'll be the first ones to know. And we hope to do more in this series on flying advanced and uh, these new automated aircraft and fly safe out there.